One of the two best methods for estimating population size, that is getting a relative idea of the density or total numbers in whatever population you're working with of animals, is the mark and recapture technique. This was first uh, invented, I suppose, or first discovered by a scientist, a wildlife biologist by the name of Peterson. Peterson worked with another wildlife biologist, uh, Dr. Lincoln, and together they refined the technique and the refinement is probably the best of all techniques. Along with the Delory catch per unit effort approach, I would say the mark and recapture gives you the most accurate population estimate of whatever wor organisms you're working with. The beauty of the mark and recapture technique is that it works very well both aquatically and terrestrially. And today we want to talk a little bit about its application, how it's done, and why it is so effective in terms of estimating population size. The idea behind it is that by sampling a small portion of the population at two different times, you can then apply that differential in sampling to the whole population and in that method get an estimation of the population. It doesn't matter, as I mentioned, whether you're working with a fish population, which is one place that's commonly used, especially in trout streams, or whether you're working with a small mammal population. The other area where it's commonly used, working with different types of field mice, deer mice, voles, squirrels, chipmunks, other types of small population or small mammal populations. There's a basic formula involved with this mark and recapture technique. And it's as follows. P, which stands for the population size that you're trying to estimate, is equal to M. M stands for the number of marked organisms that you catch on the first run. That is the first time through trapping or electrofishing. P is equal to M times the quantity. U, U refers to unmarked organisms that you catch on the second run the second test run through, plus R. R refers to the recaptured organisms. These were organisms that were marked on the first run. That whole quantity then is divided by R, or the recaptures, that same number again. Let me give it to you now in sequence. P is equal to M times the quantity U plus R divided by R. Now that's relatively easy uh, mathematics to work with. It's not difficult to be able to determine population size. Let's say we're working with a small mammal population and this brushy, weedy area around me is a classic area to do small mammal studies. And let's say we're working with voles or uh, paramiscus, some of the meadow or field type mice and we're trying to get an idea of the population size in this area. Well, the first thing we want to do is have a series of traps. We like to use small habit heart traps, uh, 8, 10 inches long in size. They can be opened from both ends. Springs, traps are set so that when the mice go in, there's food put on a little tray in the middle. And what we love to feed these things because it seems to be the best thing for getting them into the traps is some combination of peanut butter and sunflower seeds and maybe a little molasses. Uh, when I use this kind of food in my ecology class, uh, I'm lucky if I still have any left by the time we get out to the field because the students also like this kind of food. So they sit in the back of the van and eat all the peanuts, peanut butter and molasses and sunflower seeds. Assuming you have food left when you get to the field, you bait the traps and you set the traps out into the environment that you're sampling. Now you just don't throw them around at random. There's a set pattern for setting the traps, and I won't go into all the details, but basically you set traps in clusters every so often in terms of a linear distance. And you can run a number of lines through the area. You may run a 50-foot line in one direction, and then a perpendicular line for another 50 feet in another direction with clusters of generally three traps every 20 or 30 feet along this line. 
That way you're getting a pretty good sample of the population, but you're maintaining a homogeneous approach. It's not a random scattered type of mechanism for sampling. You set the traps the day before, and of course when you're setting them, you have to make sure that there's no vegetation in the way so that when the door springs shut, uh, the vegetation doesn't block the door so your small mammal escapes. Now they have a heart traps. They don't hurt the animals. These are not leg traps. Uh, they simply get in, get trapped. They have food to feed on, and you always trap, uh, check the traps the next day. Set them the day before, come back the following day and check the traps. Okay, now, we come back the following day, 24 hours later, check all the traps we've set out. And let's say that we've caught 10 small mammals, or whether they're voles or paramiscus, uh, microtus or paramiscus, it doesn't really matter. We caught 10 small mammals. Now, we're going to mark those. Those are our M's on our first run. These are marked, uh, probably the best way to mark, at least the most humane way for the mice, is just put a little dab of uh, nail polish behind the head. They can't lick it off. Eventually it'll wear off, but it'll be there for 24 hours, so pink or red, something vivid. They are then released back into the environment. Set the traps again. Bait them. Come back 24 hours later and check them. Now, you should get on your second run a combination of two types of mice. First, some of those that you marked originally, let's say you marked 10, you come back, you've caught five of them. So you've got five in the traps with little uh, red marks on the back of their head. But let's say that you have 15 other mice that are caught, a total of 20 on the second run, that have no marks. Well, those are your unmarked. So in this case, it's a simple equation of five times the quantity 15, excuse me, 10 times the quantity 15 plus 5, okay, or 10 times 20, that's 200, divided by the quantity of 5. So 5 into 200 is 40. So your population estimate P is 40. As I said, it's relatively simple to use, but there are certain criteria that you have to be sure you follow. It must be done the same way both times. In other words, wherever you set the traps on the first run, that's the way they ought to be set on the second. Second, you must handle the mice gently. You're not going to release dead mice back into the environment and then hope to recapture them, obviously. Injured mice, whatever. And third, you have to be careful that the mice don't get trap happy. I know that sounds a little weird, but they do. Once they see the food, they keep going back to the trap all the time. And if you get trap-happy mice, you're going to bias the estimate. But usually these factors are not a problem. And as I mentioned, this is one of the best techniques. One other thing that you should be very aware of, you must have at l marked at least 10% of your final population estimate. Our estimate was 40. We marked 10. So we have fulfilled the requirement of marking more than 10% of the estimate, so our population estimate is legitimate.